Wherefore, I also, Ephesus chapter 1 and verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. This is my message, like, just like Paul said, you know, the, the love you have among yourself and the love you have for the Savior and your faith is amazing because, you know, I don't need to, to, to know all the details, how you live, how you love each other, but, you know, you, your, your work faithfully continued, so uh, that shows me something. We are, wherever we are, we are not perfect, but, you know, if the work is continued, it shows us something. So... Thank you about this uh, video. The, the video uh, is 20 years of ministry. It is a lot, many, many pictures. I wish if all the pictures are here, but you know, uh, God blessed our ministry. God blessed our ministry. Uh, when I was here uh, some years ago, I said the same thing, you know. When I was a kid, I used to sing, we used to sing a song, you know. Uh, about following Jesus, following Jesus. I'll follow uh, the, I don't know how you say it. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. It was easy song, but in life, that decision was not easy. I think all of you serve the Lord, you know that. But he is faithful. Whatever it is, he's faithful to help us and to give us all his graces to achieve his purpose. So I am so happy. When I, I established the East African Baptist Mission after I served in Bolly Road Baptist Church for 20 years, you know, I just uh, started by faith, just by faith alone. I was not joined at that time by all, or the, nothing in my mind, just, you know, I started by faith. In fact, some of my friends mock at me. He's kidding. Many said, many said that. And Brahanu is exaggerating. That's what they, what they said. Later on, for, they repented. They repented. They repented. When I said that for human being, uh, I don't blame them because they are they are right. The way they see is different. The way I used to see was different. So I thank the Lord uh, when I uh, established the mission, it was with the purpose to reach the unleashed people in the region of East Africa and to strengthening the existing Baptist churches. That was in my heart. What did I do in the past? By God's grace, all our objectives, like church planting, <laughs> over 200 Churches planted. You know, small here and there. And that was our, one of our objectives. Some of, some of the churches you saw, you saw in the, on the picture, some are, are not. And the other, the second objective is opening new country. I'm glad Bio is working with, uh, and helping us in so many ways. I, I really ap uh, appreciate all BIOS people who are supporting us, their love and their concern and their, their uh, uh, help is amazing. Without, you know, brothers and sister help, we are not going anywhere, but I'm glad God, God gave us good people like Brother John and Brother Terry and their wives and Brother Dykes and Brother Peach, all of you. I can name all, all of you people here. The second point is, the second objective was opening new country. You know, let alone working in Ethiopia, that was, you know, how can you achieve this? You know, that was the people who used to say, God opened amazingly the, the door for me first in South Sudan. You know what I did? I trust the Lord because he's almighty, you know, if he laid something in my heart, he can do it. He's not depending on my economy. He's not depending on my knowledge. It is up. He's, he's the one who is doing things. And first, I flew to Juba, South Sudan, many years ago, when Pastor Cross is alive. 
Then I, I went there, and the Lord just gave me somebody just to con as a contact. That ended up very bad. Through that bad guy, and the Lord opened another one. Through that b bad person, you know, God uh, sent me to Abraham. With Abraham, we are doing great things. Abraham, uh, uh, South Sudanese, we have working now with New Air South Sudanese, with Dinka South Sudanese, and also with Nuba South Sudanese. And amazing thing is how the Lord uh, opened another door in Sudan, not in South Sudan, in Sudan, among Nuba people. It's not my technique. It's not Abraham technique. The guy who was, uh, who was in Asosa, in Ethiopia, refugee camp, Abraham and I trained him. Finally, he decided to go back to his, his country, North Sudan, and he planted a church there. Uh, the last I heard, he had 85 church members. Abraham and me decided someday to, to go there and to visit the Das ministry. I think two weeks ago, Wubit and I, we've been uh, attending a, a conference in uh, Kenya. The Kenya conference is extension of the conference we had last year. The brother uh, Terry was with us. I'm glad he was there. He was blessing for our people. That, that, that conference uh, produced another conference in Kenya. The same thing, he organized global conference. Through that global conference, God opened a door to meet Rwanda. God gave me good contact. It's not our uh, tactic, but the Lord, he know how to do it. That means through East African Baptist Mission, now we are in South Sudan, in Ethiopia. Actually, we've been, as you, you saw here, you know, some graduates, we, we taught them in uh, Uganda, around uh, 40 students there, and in uh, also Northern Kenya. Now we are working in, in the northern uh, Sudan. By God's grace, we are doing amazing thing. Evangelism, as you saw there, you know, we are, naturally our ministry is different. We are not inviting, we are going to the village, whether it is to teach or to evangelism. These days, uh, going from one place to the other, it is not easy, but still it is not excuse for us to quit ministry. And because God called us to serve him, however, we are not going to take risk. Uh, so uh, evangelism is not easy these days, but not only uh, from the Muslim side and from other Pentecostals and the, the evangelical side, you know, the competition and uh, uh, fight among themselves and this charismatic movement, those are somehow hindrance, but it's God is doing. As, as I mentioned this morning, the, in the South Ethiopia, in the, in the village, in the, in the village, in the semi-desert area, Langano, some of you know Langano. I will be, Brother John was there, Brother Mark was there, and many of uh, our friends were there. And it's not a good place to, to serve the Lord, but it is a good place, fertile ground to God's work. So, after, after they come, I think around four churches or six churches planted there in that area. The recent one is two, two churches among the Muslim uh, people. That's, that's interesting. To me, that's a miracle. It's a miracle. And the Lord will take glory for what he did on that regard in all. The other thing is Bible uh, training. As you, may, I, I, as you saw pictures there, you know, I cannot put all the pictures there. In the last 20 years, we, we trained nearly 2,000 students. Some, some of them are certificate level, some of them are diploma, some of are, very few of them are in degree level. Many of them are in, in, in the ministry now. As I mentioned this morning, you know, it is sad, you know, many people that, Churches are not strong, churches are not spiritual, churches are not um, in good shape these days in Africa. Because church means, you know, if someone go to the church and sing a song and pray and return back home, that's all. Many churches are not discipling believers. 
that they are making members. They are making members. Because of that, you know, the life of Christianity, the testimony of Christianity is bad. In my ministry, one of the movement we are, we are creating these days, you know, discipleship uh, training ministry. That's movement in, in our area. We, we don't, it's not our purpose is not to make uh, members, not to build big crowd. It is just to make them disciples. So in, even in history, one of our, the, the, the church, in the church history, one of the weakness is not discipling the believers. Wherever you go, the churches, those who did good discipleship ministry, they succeed and they resist uh, uh, difficulties. So uh, in, in, in our teaching ministry, especially as you saw here, uh, that building will play a very crucial role in the future. I'm sorry that my son, we had a, a plan to bring my son here because American embassy didn't allow him to give a visa. He, he is graduated, very good, godly man, and recently, uh, in the near future, he is ready to marry. Then he is my right hand. All that building and construction is built by him. He is responsible there. And I'm glad the Lord gave me Saga, my son, and I am blessed. I, you know, unless the Lord, I have four of his three other three boys. They are not like him. They are different. They serve the Lord in some way, but you know, somehow he is different because of call. It is not because we have mission. It's not because I'm his, uh, his pastor. First, many years ago when he, he mentioned to me, I just ignored him. He told me, I have I have burden to serve the Lord. Just ignore him. Some, I, I saw in my experience, many people, they come when they feel something, you know, I want to be a preacher. So I, I was silent for a long time. But as the days go by, when I see his life, his determination, what he's doing, and I'm, I'm convinced. I am convinced. God blessed me because of my son. And all of you, I want you to pray for him. Him and his wife and other friends, they can carry on the ministry in the future. The ministry will be in good hand. So this building, maybe at the end, we are going to show you the, 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 some pictures. Uh, it, it will be used for East Africa. When you, if, if you know, if you are aware of geography, Ethiopia in the Horn of Africa, in the center, you know, surrounded by the Muslim countries, except Kenya. Djibouti is 99% Muslim, Somalia is 99% Muslim, and North Sudan, and also the same. And we are surrounded by the Muslims. Even in Ethiopia, they are, they, they are claiming they are more than 50%. For Muslims, wherever they are, that percentage is very sensitive issue there. Even though they are not 50%, always they struggle to, to, to be f more than 50% because they want to announce Sharia law. Until they get to that number, as I said before, you know, they are so sweet and nice, but you know, when they get to that number and they want to, to act different. So if we don't have good Bible school and good churches, you know, we are going to decline, decline. We are going to sink. But I believe this Bible school will play a crucial role in the, in the future. I am glad you are seriously taught about that. And when Pastor Cross was alive, the vision was at that time, you know. God gave me the vision. And I, I, was, I was saying, the Lord, it is almost 20 years now uh, since I established the, mini the ministry. I used to say to God, how long? <laughs> How long you are going to give us this building? But 
right on his time, he did it. It was uh, amazing to me, you know, the fund to purchase the land you raise in, during COVID time. Am I right? During COVID time, it was a miracle. Then after that, all steps are amazing, you know. I, I, I didn't thought even this fast we are going to able to build the, the building. After we got the money, unless, you know, some restriction, you know, my, my son and Zaga, we, did, we, we were fast to build the buildings. And we, the development is very good. It is not easy to, to, to build faster like your country. You go uh, to the store, you, you pick something and easily, and it is not like that. For instance, I will show you later on, you know, we order a uh, roof sheet, metal sheet, almost now nearly two, two months. Now still we are not receiving. We have to wait. We have to wait. The factory, because the government is doing big business, big, big, big things, factories, so unless they achieve their, their things, they are not allow us to private in the churches any other project. So thank you about your seriousness as we are uh, building this building. And our churches are blessed. Last August, it was our, uh, Jan last January, it was our in, uh, inauguration. Half of the building was completed. As you see, some of, some of the inside part is uh, finished, clearly finished. But the upper part is not finished. I'm glad Brother uh, Terry came last time after the conference he was burdened for some reason. It is, it is, uh, the some reason is, you know, God's reason. He said, may I pray? And he did, and after that, the Lord, the Lord spoke to your heart and you began to continue. Because, you know, the leakage affect what we did uh, on the first floor. Now we are ready to cover the, that building. So, uh, the Bible school played, will play a great role in that region, especially keeping our doctrine, expanding evan uh, the word of God to that region. And the other is just uh, uh, building church buildings. Since the East African Baptist Mission uh, st established, we, pl we build around 25 church buildings. Amen. The largest is this Bible school. And some, some of the churches built by, uh, locally by our, our, uh, the fund that we, we got from that area. But it is encouragement for the Baptist churches. I am glad the American churches, especially Brother Conrad, helped us in some of the church buildings. Right now, as I said, you know, in the last six months, many churches are planted by God's grace. And in two places, two, two people, you know, gave us a land free. In the other place, also someone among us and bought a land for us. So we have uh, four projects in the future to build. You know, it, it's not big, fancy building. It's not like you, the, the, the one you saw here, uh, the building. It cost us around thirty, forty thousand uh, dollars all the buildings. But I believe God will provide in his time, but the work is growing. When the work is growing, it, it requires some money, and I believe the Lord will provide for us. And the, the Bible and the scripture the distribution, it is amazing in my life. You know, I like to distribute Bible. Some years ago, you know, during the communist time, they smuggled a containers of Bibles, different language. Most of the people, they are interested to take the Amharic one, since that is the national language. They don't care about uh, the, other, the other languages. So I went to take my share there. The, the guy who is in charge, he told me, uh, we don't have Amharic Bible. We have Oromifa Bible and Tigrinya Bible and other Bible. If you want, you can take it those. No, it was piled up there. To me, that was meaningful. I took all, even I didn't have a place to store it. 
I took it. It was some we put it in the in the bed uh, under our beds in every place. And I took it to Eritrea. I took it to Tigray. And one time, one of my friends, he passed away recently. He came to my office. He asked me, Tigrinya Bible. Do you have Tigrinya Bible? Yes, I have. He took, I think, 12 years ago, he took Tigrinya Bible from me. He, he went there to, to Tigray region, and he gave that Bible for one of the person. At that time, he was not uh, a believer, but he took that Bible. Later on, when I meet, maybe uh, 10 years later, when my friend, uh, uh, I discuss with him, do you remember one time you took my Bible from me? Yes. You know, the, the person I gave that Bible, he became Christian, now he is a pastor. I believe strongly um, giving the scripture for the people. Tracks, different kind of uh, Christian literatures we, we need to distribute. So millions of New Testament are distributed. I don't know where I can get it, but you know, uh, the Lord provide. Gideons, Milford from Milford, Last year, we, we, we got one container of New Testament from some places. If God is in our ministry, he will provide. He is faithful. He is faithful. Many come to the Lord uh, because of the East African Baptist Mission Ministry. I thank the Lord about your support and your uh, kindness and especially about your love. You know, the thing in the music that I try to play, and it is all about giving thank to the Lord for what he has done in my life. That's all about it. I cannot count it. I cannot repay for you. So uh, that's why just, you know, even though you don't know that, I, I try to play. So uh, let me show you the, the other pictures. Uh, and uh, the, the development of the projects. Pastor Mark told me to, to see there, and how do I see my picture there? Yeah, you know, this is exciting to us. Uh, this, this baby, is, she's amazing. Thank you for bringing that picture to, to, to us. We, we thank the Lord he gave us that. I pushed the button. Okay. Uh, this is the, let me explain a little bit about the, the building. Okay. The building is a two-story uh, two building. The ground stair, it is uh, 15 meters, five zero meter, And some of uh, our friends, they saw that. Uh, we divide in two places. And the, on the left side, it is the, the library and uh, dormitories. On the right side, it, I'm, I'm uh, speaking about the ground stair. And on the right side, uh, it is uh, classrooms and offices. When, in the right side, on top floor, uh, on the first floor, it is o uh, auditorium. It is big. For us, it is really big, and we can use it uh, with the Lord, with what He gave us for His glory. On the first floor, on the left side, it is guest houses for the teachers who came to teach uh, as a guest lecturer. So. That's how it looks like. And we finish the, as you see, you know, the, the budget we had, it was 245,000 something that completed the ground stair. It's not including this. This one is recently, you know, uh, we built it. And we, we got some money, and the Pastor Mark also uh, 
promise for us to to pay already it is now in bio uh, since then we we built this is the first floor this is the uh, the hall and the other side of the building is there is a lobby between the other side is first it is toilet then after that few around five uh, bedrooms whoever as a missionary come he can stay there because i learn here the mission houses, how it is helpful. Our missionaries, for locally, when they come, they can uh, uh, use that facility. That's why the Lord uh, put in my heart. Thank you about this, your provision, and what you did for us. The metal uh, is just done, everything is done, just we are waiting the, the, the sheet metal just to cover. Hopefully, while I am here, it will be finished and built, and it will be ready uh, for the inauguration. This is the front view of the, the, the building. As you see, it is divided. There is, a, there is a door, big door there, as you see. The other side is this classroom. This side is uh, cafeteria and uh, uh, cafeteria and library in this side, and it is divided into. Uh, you see, the the almost is plastering, and all those things are finished outside. And unless we finish completely the upper part, we cannot f finish. We cannot paint because it will uh, damage. Uh, everything here and this the the ground you see what do you call it this one ah we are going to finish all the way to the where the wood is piled up and the flower and other thing will be planted in this side at the end it look like this it looks like this this was my vision the lord just you know materialized my, my vision and pastor mark your vision and the church vision it was it was it was beyond our capacity but it is not for our lord yes. so i thank the lord he helped us in all in everything so uh, i can say glory to him glory to him yes. this is abraham maybe pastor mark showed you before the, I think you, sub, the, you, you helped on this building. It was very hard to get some picture from Abraham uh, because they don't allow, these days they don't allow because of security, they don't allow us to get into the refugee camp. And also I have to fly on the road, we cannot drive. It is a long way and, and also uh, 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 so many dangerous things around. This is my South Sudanese friend. Do you know what, uh, what, what is this? When their church burned down last year, they didn't quit the ministry, and they continue. I think that's all. I truly appreciate your prayer and your support, and uh, I thank the Lord about all of you. He is the one who led me to this church, and... That means a lot to me. Uh, as your brother or as your missionary, I want to challenge. This heart should be continued. Not only for East African Baptist Mission. Until the Lord Jesus Christ come back. We need to continue with the same speed. Maybe more. Maybe more. We are, we are doing one way or the other way and doing for his glory. Thank you about your kindness and your love your, and your concern for us. We are striving there in East Africa to reach the unreached people and to strengthening the, the Baptist churches in that region. Baptists are not strong in that area. Now we are raising. Brother, Brother Terry saw that, you know, is preaching, you know, last time it was, he, that was good. Everybody just blessed with everybody's preaching. So, but now we are just climbing up, ascending up. And that was my vision when I started 20 years ago. The global conference that, that the Lord put in my heart, the global conference, when, uh, this year also in October, you know, 
many people will come from different countries, from Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, and South Sudan, North Sudan, and South, uh, and South Africa, and from Philippines, and from Italy, and even from America. Because we are increasing the, the, our fellowship, oneness, to reach the unreached people, and encouraging our people. Uh, on that meeting, for the first time, our churches promised for mission offering. Our way of mis doing mission is, was different. Every local church do something differently, but with united heart. And uh, you know every time people are calling, what can I do the, the, the money I promised? Where shall I deposit the money I promised? That is amazing. That is amazing. Please pray about the conference, annual conference, about our, our annual conference. I said to Brother uh, uh, John this afternoon, I know it is not easy. It is not easy just to come to Africa. But I want the, the Faith Baptist Church and bio representation in all annual meetings. Because it is not simple thing, it is big thing. It is global things. If we, if we want to create movement and uh, the, it, the movement create in Kenya that, that meeting, produce that meeting. One of my uh, American friends, you know, whom I invited him last year, he came here for the first time, he, he started mission conference. My Nigerian friend, he told me he's going to have one. Right after I return back from here, I am going to go to uh, Tanzania. Also, they have another big conference. So I don't want to miss Bio and Faith Baptist when we have this annual conference. I'm not just undermining the, the cost and other things, but my heart is I want you to be there. God bless you, and I love you all. Isn't that good to see? Uh, church, we just need to we just need to continue. We need, we just need to continue in the work, like he said, until the Lord Jesus comes. Uh, just stay this course. I think we need to make it a matter of prayer uh, that the steel gets there for this roof. So let's start. Um, I'm challenging our church family now. This needs to be part of your daily prayer. I. It doesn't matter about the supply issues in Ethiopia. God owns the earth. One of the verses we read in the teen class this morning was Proverbs, or Psalm 24.1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So we just need to pray that whoever has that steel that belongs to EABM gets it over to their property in a timely manner before the rainy season starts in June. Um, and God can do that. Um, we have so far, we've put, and, and we talked about this before, we've put $40,000 into that second floor, and you see what's, what's gone on. Um, we were talking before church tonight, about $20,000 more, and that will be completely closed in. Windows and doors, they can paint the whole building, so from the outside, the building will look completely finished. Later on down the road, they're going to work on finishing the, the, that second floor. But right now, we just need to do that. And so we're gonna, we've got about $20,000 more to invest in this building. And what a, what a wonderful facility. And you could hear in, in how it's going to be used. You can hear the potential of this building. One of the things Burhanu is going to do there is use that building to start a church. They're going to they're gonna plant a new church there in Dukum. And it's going to be held on this, in this building. So the building's not just for... Uh, the Bible College or the EABM administration, there's going to be a new church planted there. The places I was so excited to hear about these churches being planted in the Muslim areas in Langano, um, uh, just God's doing great things there, and we get to be a part of that. You, you get to be a part of this. And fruit, fruit that is taking, uh, or fruit that is coming to fruition there in, in Ethiopia is going to be credited to your account as you continue to give to Faith Promise Missions, as you continue to pray for Pastor Burhanu and, and these many pastors that he's training, I loved seeing all those graduates, didn't you? Standing there holding diplomas and certificates um, and the smiles on most of their faces. Some of them looked like they just finished finals week and were wore out. Uh, that's exciting to me to see. And all of those pastors, 
the training, the Bible college teachers, that one picture of all the teachers, that just thrills me. Um, I, I think sometimes we get way too focused on the United States, and I love our country. I love our country. But every person in this room could go to any bookstore tomorrow and buy a Bible. You can do that. You can't do that in Ethiopia. Um, I'm excited to hear about his, his, he mentioned his burden for Bible distribution. And we, as a result of our missions conference in February, um, we talked about that seed line ministry where we can pick and choose the Bibles that we put together and ship. And so we can, we can send Amharic Bibles to Ethiopia um, and John Romans to Ethiopia. And so um, exciting things there. I, I just think tonight ought to increase everyone, your burden and mine, it ought to increase our burden for the lost people in the world. The urgency of the gospel. That was our, our missions conference theme a few years ago. The urgency of the gospel. Jesus is coming soon. He is coming soon. And the opportunity to get the gospel to people who have never even heard the name Jesus, it's running out. I'm not being dramatic. I'm just telling you what the end of the Bible says in case you haven't read it. He's coming soon. The opportunity to get the gospel to people is, is diminishing, the, the time-wise. But the opportunity to expand the gospel in these days, my goodness. Um, I'm, just, I, I'm excited about that. We're going in July. You could, be, you could be walking in that building if you wanted to be in July. God could provide that for you. If you wanted to go, God could provide that for you. Um, he's a big God. We've been talking about that on Sunday mornings. He's a big God. And um, it would be wonderful to see, uh, to see our church represented there. And so you pray for Burhanu and Wubit, would you? I'm going to quit talking because we can talk about this ministry all night. Um, and this is one. This is one missionary that you're, you're partnering with, church. We, we can talk about what Amber, what's going on with Amber in, in Europe. I told you Wednesday night I had to talk to Amber. Remember that? Wednesday night, 5 till, we started it a little bit after 9, 5 till 11. I told you I blocked out two hours, one, minute 57, or one hour, 57 minutes. That's how long we talked Wednesday night. And she is excited. God's doing some great things in Amber's life right now and encouraging her and opening doors. We, we, we can multiply that. We can talk about missionary after missionary after missionary that God has allowed you and I to partner with. And I want to encourage you. If you're not having a part in Faith Promise Missions, if you're, if you're only tithing, you ought to be. I mean, that's a matter of obedience. But if you, if you want to get in on what God is doing around the world, if you're not going to go to Ethiopia or to South Sudan or to Kenya, if you're not going to go to those places, then let's, let's get people there that, that, our God, that God has called. Let's get them there. And if you've got to get, give up some Dr. Pepper during a week to increase your missions giving, do it. You know, I get burdened every time I see how many, and I, I mention this every missions conference we have, the billions of dollars that we spend on our pets in this country. Not thousands or millions billions with a B that we're spending on cats and dogs and birds while people are going to hell. And we're not participating in Faith Promise Missions. We'll spend $25 on a bag of dog food because we don't want him to have the Walmart brand. He's got to have the Purina brand. But we don't give anything to missions. That's shame on us. Shame on us, church. I want to invest in something that's going to matter in eternity, and this is. And after you and I are in heaven and Burhanu and Wubit are in heaven, God could still be at work with that next generation of young people that's coming up and getting and, and they're doing what God, God wants them to do. So let's, let's continue praying, all right? Let's stand and be dismissed in prayer tonight. I hope your heart's been encouraged and challenged and you get to see a little bit of what we're going. We're going to meet all these people in heaven, by the way, that he's putting up on the screen. Um, we get to meet them one day and talk about the goodness of God for eternity. Um, Let's do this. Brother John, would you come up? John Yingling is not only a church member here, he's also the president of Baptist International Outreach. And Brother Terry, would you come up? Uh, the general director at Baptist International Outreach. And Burhanu and Wubit are going to be traveling for the next month. 
So I'm going to ask these two men to close us out in prayer and pray specifically for their ministry and their safety. And then church, let's covenant together that for the next two months, we're going to be praying for this couple as they travel and that they're safe on the road, that the car runs good. Bio has provided them a car. And uh, let's, let's just close out with a little bit of a season of prayer here tonight. So whoever wants to pray first and then second, and then uh, we'll be dismissed. Thank let's you. pray. Father, we thank you so much for, as Burhanu said, what you're doing there in East Africa. We thank you for the work of East Africa Baptist Mission, and we thank you for Burhanu and Wubit and their faithfulness to you. And Father, we ask that you would provide the metal roofing that needs to come. Uh, Father, it's been paid for. You've provided for it. We're just waiting for it to, to happen. And uh, it, it's very well possible that the enemy is, is stalling this peace. And I pray, Father, that you would break through and that you would answer and that that roof would get put on. I pray for Tsega as, he, as he's at home and, and working there. I pray that you'd continue to fill him with your spirit and protect all the workers and complete that work for your glory. And Lord, I pray now as, as Burhanu and Wubit get ready to hit the road, I pray that that car that you've provided will remain safe and it will run smoothly. And I pray, Father, that everywhere Burhanu and Wubit go, that you'll stir in the hearts of believers and, uh, and challenge them, Lord, that these days are, um, are not long. As you, as you said, the night is coming when no man can work. And I pray, Father, that you would use Burhanu and Wubit while they're here to stir your people to uh, look at the fields that are white unto harvest. I pray that you would bless this time here and keep them both safe. And, Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. And Father in heaven, I want to thank you tonight for, uh, for your eternal vision and how that even before creation, uh, that the things that we've heard about here tonight, that they were in your mind and on your heart. Lord, there's been uh, a lot of investment on your part, certainly with giving your son, but also the human investment and financial investment and a lot of faith that has been invested in just this one single uh, effort of the East African Baptist Mission. But Lord, I thank you that tonight that we have had a little bit of sight, uh, things that have been put before our eyes tonight uh, through the pictures and then through the, uh, the report that was given of great and marvelous things that you're doing. Thank you for your, your plan for the human race. Thank you for, for your working in us and working through us and working among us. And I'm praying tonight for Burhanu and Wubit as they, thank you for bringing them here. Uh, Lord, there's a, a, a pretty uh, busy schedule laid out ahead of them for the next uh, two months. I'm praying that you would give them uh, each day, give them a full measure of the physical strength they need a full measure of emotional strength and that you would uh, give them a fullness of, uh, of spiritual strength and anointing as well. I'm praying that you would uh, use them uh, to uh, spread good news of what you were doing there in the East African region and that you would then use that, uh, that news to challenge the lives of people uh, that you would help men and women and young people as well uh, to take into consideration just what it might be, uh, what might be your plan for their life um, and their part in missions. I pray, Lord, that um, there would be people who would surrender uh, to your call upon their life, even here in our own church uh, and in the churches where uh, Burhanu and, and Wubit visit that you would challenge hearts and lives and there would be a yieldedness of people to you. And Lord, I do pray that you would, uh, as John had mentioned about the, um, <clears throat> the roofing materials, uh, Lord, this is, this is not a problem for you. Uh, I, I think of one occasion in the scriptures where uh, someone said that all that is needed is for you to speak but a word. And so Lord, I pray that you would uh, bring together all of the necessary elements for these building materials to be uh, brought forth and to be brought onto that job site and that you would then be with the 
uh, uh, those who are involved in the construction and application of that, that you would um, uh, speed them on their way and, and bring that roof uh, as a protective cover over that building to protect uh, uh, the things that have been done there. And we thank you tonight for the privilege of having the opportunity to hear of all of your goodness and what you're doing. And we pray that you would give us safety as we leave this place. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.